Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Welcome, everybody, to the glorious episode of the Student Body Right USC podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas. And I am podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day out here in Southern California. P O R S B R is my Twitter handle. Might get some rain tomorrow, so that'd be that'd be you know that's always nice to get a little rain here. Once in a little change up here on the left coast. Um, thank you guys for watching and bearing with this un this unbelievably disappointing season for USC Trojans um, this year. I don't think anybody would say. I mean, somebody took the over under on you know nine or ten wins on USC they probably would have won a whole lot of money they probably did win a whole lot of money as far as far as that goes and lose they lose to Oregon we saw that um, I thought Oregon um, you know really kind of just did their thing as far as that goes they they were solid in that game um, USC just did not they didn't do what you know what they needed to do and the offensive line did not play well in this game. Um, really a continuing kind of a continuing story for everything um all year especially defensively they have just they have just struggled as far as far as that goes and we and, and we kind of talked about that with Evan Desai um so the next podcast you watch you can you can you can we can kind of go over that part of it but I did want to talk about some some things packed um last year pack 12 and you know going to the big 10 chip Kelly is going to probably be out um at um at UCLA so as UCLA and USC get ready to play this um, this rivalry game this weekend. Um, that's something that's that's, that's going to be a big story um, for him to be. He's going to be out um, most likely, and then because they're not going to play around, they can't mess around, they can't joke around. They're going to a huge conference. They make it's a big deal that um, USC and UCLA are going to the Big Ten, and they need a big time head coach there. And I don't know if you can get a big time head coach there. I'm not sure if the if the Big 10 thing is going to help them enough to get a big time head coach, but they kind of they really need one. They got they have the US UCLA has to flex. It's known as a basketball school and occasionally they give you a little Katie McNall um you know this type stuff at 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 S, at, um, at, US, at UCLA, but they're just not going to be I don't know if they're going to be able to bring that big name who can who can come there and kind of take over a program and, and head right. And I think, I mean, to me, like you don't want to be heading into this conference, right? You don't want to be heading into this conference, not ready, like, you know, um, not ready for prime time. I think you want to be solidified uh, at prime time. Right. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that I see that I don't like for UCLA going into the big 10 is that they're going to be going brand new coach, brand new situation. Who knows? Like you know, who who knows? Maybe maybe, maybe they can get Dion to come to LA. Who knows? Um, a lot warmer there than it would than it would be in Colorado. Um, pack the Pac twelve. Um, everything's you know the, you know we have the Oregon State situation and the Washington State situation. Who knows what's going to happen to those programs? But I think that's the, the I think they want to mention a little bit about um, Blitkoff, who was just a horrible commissioner for the for this conference and didn't really realize the power that UCLA and USC had. And I'm not saying give them all the money. I'm just saying, like, you know, just realize that, like, they kind of they kind of drive the revenue of, of the conference. And his mismanagement of it, his mismanagement of the TV deal, not taking a TV deal from, from ESPN is going to affect a bunch of kids and a bunch of administrators and a bunch of people who work their really hard work their tail off, who work for Oregon State University, who work for um, U, um, Washington State University, who are sitting there next because they're trying to finalize next year's schedule for college football and you're sitting there and, and those kids and those and those people who work very hard up there are don't even have a conference to play in um they try to join something they try to join um you know the big 12 i think and you know that those texas schools don't want to fly up there <laughs> they don't want to even if it's every other year i mean you know, I mean, they don't want to. They don't want to fly up there. I mean, maybe they can get some cupcakes to go up there to go play them, and then after that, you know, go play somebody else. Um, you know, maybe have like almost like an all, all road schedule. Um, but like it's just after that, after the cupcake games. But it's 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 tough. It's really it's a tough situation for both of those teams. Tough sledding. Um, I, I'm. It's kind of interesting to see something to something to watch to see what happens with uh, Washington State and um. 
at Oregon State um, in the future. Um, Saturday, 12.30 um, Pacific Standard Time, you, you at UCLA comes to USC, comes to the Coliseum, comes to the Cali, and the guy who is probably the best, and I'm not going to say probably, the guy who's the greatest quarterback to ever play for USC will undoubtedly, I mean, you have to, you'd have to think, you have to use your noggin and think that this is probably his last game at SC. Um, you'd have to think that. You'd have to think that this is his last game at SC. Um, I know, you know, he has said he might not come out. He might, he, he's been kind of close to his best, close to the best as far as playing that card. But at the end of the day, I think it's just, I think he's going to end up just leaving SC and going to the NFL. It's going to be hard not to do that when you're going to be the you no know, number one pick, number two pick, or number three pick. Like you're going to go very high. Um, life changing money, life changing everything for everybody involved with the Caleb Williams family. Um, you know, obviously a lot of thrills in during that time period and just not not enough urgency. I would say this. I mean, that's the one thing that really kind of bothers me about the Caleb Williams situation at SC with under Lincoln Riley. It wasn't the urgency there. I mean, the urgency to say, hey, like, let's do this now. Like, you know, friendships aside, like it's a business. And Alex Grinch, it's a business. Like Alex Grinch should have been gone. They should have, you know, when 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 you had a guy like Jim Leonard available, you should have rolled with that. Like if they were just, if they were just mediocre and not the dead last, giving up the most twenty yard plays, having a middle linebacker who leads the nation in, in um and missed tackles like that kind of defense. They were just a regular defense. They could be possibly playing for something more. And I, and I think that's something that's really the saddest part about the Caleb Williams situation. The guy was a touchdown machine. He touched, he scored touchdowns on the ground, scored touchdowns in the air, was a good teammate, never at any point um threw his defense under a bus. Um, and if, if there was a quarterback who people wouldn't have said anything if they did throw the defense under the bus, it was it was Caleb Williams. So um, you know, I, I, people will make and people will make fun of the tears. People make fun of the fingernail polish, all stuff like that. But you know, all the people who are doing that, let's be honest. Like, if if he became a New York Giant, if he became a, you know, a, a Los Angeles Ram, if he came, if he he becomes like you know, one, a, he becomes a player on your team, all that goes away, and you will be you won't be talking about that anymore as far as that goes. So I really, um. Commend the, commend the young man, um, best quarterback ever played at USC. It's not even a question. I think before that it was probably Carson Palmer, but this guy was just – he just scored so many touchdowns. He just did so much for um, for this offense. And and I just – you know, he I didn't know exactly. You never really know what a player is until he comes to your team. You never know what a coach is until he comes to your team and you see them every day, all the time you know, you know, just battle it out all the time. And I just got to say, I mean, kudos to him, man. He's just been, he's been absolutely just phenomenal as a player. And I, and I, I, I got a guy, I got to get it. I think, I think if you're going to go see him, um, you're, you're going to go see him play. You better go see him. You better go see him this weekend because um, that's, if you want to see him play live, because it's the last game. It's the, that's the last game. Everything else will be on YouTube as far, as far as, as far as, um, as far as that goes, as far as, as far as saying, Saying saying um goodbye to saying goodbye to Caleb Williams because I mean he's really was a special talent there as well. Um, just a couple of just like transfer things that I just wanted to kind of go over. Um, disappointing transfers here, and I'm not sure what went wrong. And just the fit, who knows what went wrong? A lot of things went wrong for SC SC this year, but I think. I think the one thing that really, one of the things that really surprised me the most was Dorian Singer. I thought Dorian Singer for sure would have a, would have, would would have been a big, um, big addition to the team, and and been more of an impactful player. Just it never worked out for him. Um, it's too bad. Um, I'm sure we'll have a, I'm sure he either he either transfer for a senior year or you know or just try to go into the National Football League. But he is a very talented player. And it's gonna be sad to see him to see him go. I know he was very upset on the sidelines at the game because he was getting he was getting benched. And you know you saw you know Jacoby Lane play, 
you saw um you know some other people play as well too so it'd be interesting to see what happens as far as as far as he his future goes um the offensive line i think overall just just really never never really got it i mean they especially at the arizona game i thought at the arizona game happened it was just like okay you know it just was up and down the rest of the year as far as that goes and we know about the Alice Grinch experience. It just wasn't a good one um, for uh, for for him. And I think Lincoln Riley, another one, another game where he doesn't he didn't know when to go for two. You don't go for two in that situation. Um, when you miss it, then you're down nine in the Oregon game, and they know you they know you need two scores. Whereas if you if you just kick the extra point, they have to play a different way because they're only up eight points. Opposed to opposed to being up nine points, eight points late in the game, you, you possibly can do that. And I think people talk about the defensive coordinator position with USC a lot, and they should because obviously the position's open, and we'll see what happens there. But I think it's time for like you know people like for somebody like Jen Cohen to just kind of sit him in the office and just say, hey, like we're paying for a special teams coach, so why not have one? <laughs> like what? Like 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 what you're not paying? And it's not coming out of your money. Like let us just play. Let us just have a special teams coach. Um, you know, I thought the onside kick was a poor one by um, by Dennis, and it wasn't. I mean, who knows? Like how much they even practice that or whatever, whatever. But why not have that? Like why not be like super, hundred percent tight on every single aspect of the football team? I think that's one thing that I want to see going forward is you know the time management stuff like he did it last year at, at utah just not calling timeouts had three timeouts where they had you know where utah had the ball like what a minute and 58 seconds left um, at the goal line it's like cousin like just call timeouts like make sure make sure you have enough you have you, you make sure you have enough um time for caleb williams who was on fire that day to win that game and who knows what happens i mean that was the game if they won that game they could have been played for a national championship so um, there are some little things that he has to clean up and they have to become more, um, just, just taking everything into consideration as far as getting better. It can't just be like my way, this way, whatever you got to do what's right and do, and do what you need to do and become, and kind of, kind of sit there and just have some self scouting and say, this is where we went wrong as a, as a, as a, as a program. And this is what we got to do to improve it. And it's not just don't fall into the trap of saying it's just, just the defense. It's not just a defensive unit. It's, it's a lot of different things. So I'll have some real, if, if, if they're, if, if they're willing to have, if, if I'm looking around as well, have some real conversations about that part of it, they can, they can go in the right direction. Um, but until then, um, you know, they could still be, they could still be there. Like you got 12 teams in the playoff next year. Like, if you can't become one, of the, if they go through another year where they're not in the playoff, that's going to be that's going to be a tough pill to swallow, as far as that goes. All right, Trojan fans, um, three shows for you this week. So really excited about all three of them. Uh, myself, the solo show, um, the show with Evan Desai coming up, talking about some um, stuff there, and then you also have um, Coach B. Coach B, I, I, mean, I was under the weather, so I missed the uh, miss Coach B last week. We 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 text back in the text during the show, call called each other during the show. So we're we're ready to go for um for an, for another um um Dwayne Douglas and Coach B show. So that's always fun. All right, Trojans, fight on. See you next time.